Here are the top five common mistakes small gaming YouTubers make. And if you can just avoid these pitfalls, you'll be surprised how quickly your gaming channel can blow up. Let's get stuck into it. Mistake number five. Now this first one is so huge, you can have the best title, thumbnail, and video, but you'll still fail about as epically as this child trying to blow out his brother's birthday candles. So let me show you some examples from some of you guys and we'll bully them. Now I want you to look at these three videos and try and figure out the big problem all of them have in common. Yes, the thumbnails are a bit average and the titles could be worded better, but I want you to think more high level. Take a step back. Can you see it? These videos are very creator centric. The problem is all of these creators are making videos that inherently make the assumption that viewers will be interested in them. But the problem is as a small creator, nobody knows who you are and nobody cares who you are. It might sound harsh, but it'd be exactly the same for me if I tried to make Minecraft videos. Nobody in that niche cares about me or knows who I am. And therefore, if I was making very creator centric videos, they would not do well. To fix this, you need to make your videos objectively interesting. For example, this video from Press and plays, or this one, or this one. Yes, all these examples have good titles and thumbnails. The videos themselves are probably quite good. And yes, they're from larger creators. But if we take a step back, these video ideas themselves are objectively interesting. It doesn't matter whether you created this video, I created this video, or Press and Plays created this video. As long as the title and thumbnail are good, it'd still retain the majority of its magic because the video idea itself is objectively interesting. The next big mistake small gaming YouTubers make is optimizing their videos for keywords. So here's the thing, YouTube is not like Google. You can't rank a video number one like you would rank a website on Google. The algorithms don't work that way. The YouTube algorithm takes into account a whole range of things when it's ranking videos. And this is why your search results page for a specific search term could look very different to my search results for that very same search term. On top of that, in my experience, the vast majority of channels that grow very quickly don't even get the majority of their views from keyword optimization and YouTube search. Rather, they get the majority of their views through the algorithm promotion their content in the next up section or on their viewers home pages. So basing your whole strategy around trying to rank number one on YouTube search, which is what a lot of small creators seem to do, is not always the best approach. Unless you've got a strategy where you're specifically sniping certain keywords. And if that's you, that's okay. But for most people, that's not you. Most people are creating their content and then trying to figure out what keywords they can stuff into it to make it rank number one. I say most people here as a generalization to illustrate this point. Maybe it's not most people, but there's definitely a hell of a lot. So what should you do? You should optimize your videos for humans. Write titles and descriptions that are highly attention grabbing, appealing and clickable rather than just stuff full of random keywords that's semi related to your content that get a lot of search volume. Now, is it important to add keywords and metadata? Sure, it can be. But as I talked about previously, for most of you, it's usually not anywhere near as important as you'd think. You can just add some general keywords in your description, maybe one keyword or keyword phrase in your title. And even that's not always necessary. And then just let the algorithm figure out the rest. Even if you're not getting any views, the algorithm has a ton of AI services that will literally allow it to transcribe your entire video, to break down your video frame by frame and analyze what's in your thumbnail. And so even if you added zero keywords to your video right now, the algorithm would probably have a decent idea of what your video is about. And so while adding keywords to your description or tags might not necessarily hurt the performance of your video, what is hurting you is all that time you're spending meticulously analyzing, researching and copying and pasting keywords, because for most of you, that time would be better spent coming up with more clicks clickable titles, thumbnails, and video ideas. This next problem is probably one of the most common ones. You're probably sick of hearing YouTube educators preach about how important it is to have a great title and thumbnail and idea so that you get a high click-through rate, or how essential it is that you have engaging video content so you have good audience retention. And it's 100% true that those things are essential, but you might've heard a lot about that stuff before, so I'm not gonna reiterate those things in this video. I am, however, gonna draw your attention to another related mistake that can cause a serious amount of damage. And that is overestimating the quality of your content. Here's the thing, at GYGC, we're closing in on almost a thousand students. And across all of the channels I've worked on, we've gained over 300 million views. Now I'm not saying that to brag, I'm saying that to give context to this next thing I wanna tell you, which is I'd estimate out of all of the people I've worked with, 70 to 80% of them think their content is great. They think their tiles and thumbnails are good. They think their videos are binge worthy. The hard truth is most of the time they're not. Now I understand it's unhealthy to constantly find fault in everything 
you do. I understand it can be demoralizing when you feel like you're just on a treadmill, discovering error after mistake after error in your content. But it's also very unhealthy for your channel if you think you have good content when the reality is it's actually not that great. Because the first step to solving any problem is actually acknowledging that problem exists. So if you don't acknowledge that your titles and thumbnails and videos probably not as good as you think they are, you're never gonna invest the time, energy, or even money that it might take to really fix those things. This next mistake kills so many videos, it's not funny. And it's intros, or more specifically, terrible intros. See, chances are most of you watching this probably have retention graphs on your videos that look like this. In other words, you're losing a huge chunk of your audience in the first 30, 20, or sometimes even five seconds. And the problem with that is that even if your video actually is good, by the time you get into the content or get to the good bit, no one's left to actually see it. So you need to make sure that your intros are as amazing as they possibly can be. Otherwise, the entire remainder of your video is basically a waste of time. And ways you can do that are to reassure your viewers that they're in the right place as soon as they hit your video. See, when a viewer clicks on your video, they have an expectation in their mind for what they think they're gonna get from that video. Whether it's entertainment, the answer to a specific problem, a tutorial on how to do something, whatever it is. And your job is to make sure you prove to them early on in your video that you are going to fulfill their expectations. So if you're an entertainment channel, that might mean getting into the content ASAP or showing a little highlight reel of what happened in your video. Or if you're an education or commentary channel, it might mean specifically stating exactly what your video is about right at the beginning. And sure, as you become more experienced, you can become more creative with your intros. But when you're just starting out, you can literally keep it as simple as simply saying exactly what you mean in as few words as possible. And a great example of this is the infamous Mr. Beast Squid Games video, in which he masterfully manages to summarize the entire video in less than 10 seconds. I recreated every single set from Squid Game in real life, and whichever one of these 456 people survives the longest wins 456 grand. But if you fix all the mistakes that we've talked about in this video, but not the last one I'm about to reveal now, your channel is still practically doomed. So here it is. And I know because I made this mistake so bad when I made my first gaming channel. And it's promoting your videos, or more specifically promoting your videos in the wrong way. I remember when I was first creating content, it felt like my videos just weren't getting any traction. I'd post new videos and I'd work on the titles and thumbnails and try and make them as good as they could be. And I thought the content was really good. In reality, it wasn't that good. Go back to a previous point. But regardless, it was frustrating because it just felt like I wasn't getting the exposure I needed to be discovered. So I turned to promoting on social media. I used to write little snippets or teasers or hooks accompanied by links to my videos that I could post in social media groups. And after doing hundreds, if not thousands of these, I got pretty good. The problem was the traffic it was bringing in was actually hurting my channel. Now, I never promoted in sub for sub or view for view kind of groups, but I would sometimes promote in small YouTuber promotion groups or just general gaming groups. And the problem with that was the kind of audience I attracted wasn't necessarily the ideal type of audience for my videos. For example, let's say I made a promotion in a general gaming group. And let's say that promotion resulted in 10 extra views for my video. Out of those 10 new viewers, four of them religiously watch and engage with Call of Duty content, three of them religiously watch and engage with Fortnite content, and another three of them love Counter-Strike Global Offensive content. One of the ways the algorithm promotes your videos is by looking at the types of people who watch your videos and engage with your videos, and then pushing out your videos to people who are similar to those people who watched and engaged with your videos. And the big problem here was that my videos were about, let's say, Minecraft. So the algorithm might have looked at my content and been like, huh, seems like people who are interested in Call of Duty are watching this video. Maybe I'll promote it to people who watch Call of Duty content. But then when it promoted it to those types of people, those viewers didn't click on or engage with my video because it was a Minecraft video. And then the algorithm was like, oh, well, maybe it's not a good fit for Call of Duty. Hang on a minute. This video got three views from people who religiously watch Fortnite content. Maybe I'll promote this video to people who like Fortnite content. And then it did that. And because my video was a Minecraft video, Fortnite viewers weren't interested in it. All those who did click on it left very quickly because it wasn't the type of content they want to watch. And then the algorithm's left thinking, oh, well, that didn't work. Maybe I'll promote it to CSGO viewers instead. And then when it did that, it got even more negative audience signals. And then it would come to the conclusion that, well, maybe this video is just not a very good video. Now, in my case, that was probably right. My videos kind of suck. But in your case, maybe that's not the correct conclusion. Maybe your videos are good, but they're just not being promoted to the right type of audience. You know, the viewers who will actually click on and highly engage with your videos. And your super general promotions are just confusing the algorithm even more. Now, this is an oversimplified example, but you get the point. If you're promoting your content, you need to make sure the type of people who see your promotions would actually want to click on and watch your video all the way to the end if it was served to them organically on their YouTube homepage or in their next up recommended bar. And if you don't know where to find places to promote your content, well, you need to 
to click on this video because I'm going to reveal a whopping 21 different ways to promote your gaming videos completely for free. Click it now and I'll see you there.